but we're going to give you guys our top five, but we are going to touch on every single team. And as Sandra mentioned, now 12 teams in the NWSL, which is huge, welcoming San Diego and Angel City. Um, I love it. I love that there are now 12 teams. Heck yeah. I know. Me too. Let's let's hop right into it. So probably unshockingly to a lot of people out there, number one uh, for, our, for our top five teams, we've got Washington Spirit. We went with the 2021 NWSL champions. Uh, you know, that, that team, once they win that big one in the end, right, that team always has, uh, that particular team always has a, a little bit of a target on their back, right, going into the next season because they're the team to, to take down. And that is the Washington Spirit in this case. So 2021 champions, they have a mix of, you know, they have a mix of, of experienced veterans, right? But this really young core of players that we had a blast covering during the 2021 season, uh, players who are only going to continue to improve, right? And get better uh, with time as they grow and as professionals in the, in the league. Uh, Trinity Rodman, we talked a lot about. She's the 2021 uh, Rookie of the Year. Players like Ashley Sanchez, and I would even include somebody like an Andy Sullivan in that mix. Someone who's you know got drafted by this club and has sort of been in this DC area system uh, for for some time. But in terms of the off season news impacting our number one power ranked team, Lisa, um, there's there's some discussions right now. We've seen out there, right, rumored and reported that that interim uh, head coach uh, Chris Ward hasn't been named officially head coach, but there are ongoing conversations, right? Or preliminary conversations about that. Um, and in terms of the player side of things, this team has made a trade with one of those expansion sides. So uh, Tegan McGrady was traded to San Diego uh, Wave FC, and uh, there is a bit of roster protection uh, within that for, for Washington Spirit and uh, some picks that were shuffled in the mix as well. But uh in your perspective, sort of seeing like how we pick them to jump and then kind of looking into this week and sort of seeing the rumored conversations about Chris Ward and then seeing them trade out one of those young, promising players that we were talking about. Are you still sort of feeling confident in, in, our, in our pick here at number one? I am. I How can you not pick Washington Spirit as the number one power ranked team for next year? Even if you look at this team with horse blinders on and you look at just um, maybe them winning the championship. OK, yes, they're going to be in our top five for 2022. But also, if you take off those horse blinders and you look at the evolution of this team over the last year or two, even I think at the start of the 2021 season, Sandra, they were your dark horse to make it to the playoffs. Um, they won the whole thing. They did it. And not a lot of people saw that coming. Um, not only did they have coaching change in the middle of their season and all of the adversity that they faced off the pitch. But Chris Ward came in as the interim head coach of this team and changed everything. This team went from inconsistent and, and lots of ups and downs and trying to mold these new players to a veteran team to finding consistency, having a coach that really looked at all players on the roster, not just the starters, to kind of change things up on the field, to read the play. Um, it, we spoke with Tegan McGrady, who is now headed to San Diego, but one thing that she really emphasized about this team and head coach, or excuse me, interim head coach Chris Ward, is that you never really knew who was going to be in the starting lineup. And I think that kind of energy um, keeps a team fresh, especially as you go into a new season with new competition, with expansion clubs coming in. Uh, they also have rookie of the year, Trinity Rodman on this squad and Ashley Hatch, um, incredible goalkeepers and defense, but it's really the players that aren't the superstars that make so much work for this Washington spirit team and allow them to be humble which allows them to grow and not expect that they're going to win every single game and go out and fight and scrap. I keep Washington spirit at the top of my list for next season. Um, as it stands, of course, they're number one for me. You know, I think one of the other components of, of like watching all of these trades unfold is that the, the fact that the expansion draft this year is, is essentially a double expansion draft. You know, that there's two teams in the mix vying for for players right from from remaining clubs in the league so with this move for uh tegan mcgrady to to san diego wave uh it's it only maybe kind of gives them partial right um mm -hmm. partial protection right there's still i'm sure people are like curious about like what's going to happen with uh, angel city uh is washington spirit just going to 
you know, go ahead and pursue, you know, the regular, the regular role in an expansion draft, or are there going to be con a, a continuing, a continuation of um, potential rumors and, and trades and moves like that? Because we're starting to see that a lot um, with those two particular expansion teams, that teams are clearly reaching out, right. And trying to gauge interest and then kind of maybe making their decision based off of that. So uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited to uh, take a look and see, what else uh, happens uh, for the for the remaining teams? Uh, I think if you're Washington Spirit, though, maybe you do try to gauge something, perhaps you know, because like we've talked a lot about it. There's a lot of promising players on on that team, and and if Angel City is still looking, right, maybe you are trying to still have those conversations with that team uh, as well. Um, but let's uh, let's let's move on. Let's take a let's take a look at our number two team that we went with, Lisa. And number two in our way too early power rankings, we have OL Rain. So we chose OL Rain. Uh, we chose them knowing that the team was going to look different. Um, this was a team that really had this amazing second hand push, and they went ahead with some phenomenal performances from their French players, right? Players that they got on loan from uh, from Olympic Lyon. And we're talking about, you know, Sarah Buadi and Gold, Jennifer Marozan, Eugenie Le Somer. And they had Laura Harvey join them mid-season as well. And they just went on this epic, epic run all the way to the 2021 semifinal. But looking back at some of the verbiage on those initial contracts, right? Lisa talked a little bit about how those players we're going to be with the club through December 2021. It's officially December 2021. And there's no, there's no, there hasn't been an official word, right, on, on those players. But considering the original wording, the loan is completed and done. So I'm a little curious as to how this team is, is going to look when those three players played such a key role in that push to the semifinals. Um, do you think potentially, you know, not knowing how they're going to replace those players is going to like, we're going to come back and look at this number two spot and say, Ooh, yikes, we shouldn't have put them at number two. What are, what are you, what's your vibe around all rain right now? I do maybe foresee us saying that come next June, July, when the season is, is almost halfway done. Um, but this all rain team, even if you look back at the 2021 season at the start of the season, they really weren't anything special. They didn't have that much going for them. Um, but it takes time and it takes uh, games and day in and day out for teams to find that momentum. And once OL Reign hit their stride, they didn't slow down there. They had a lot of ups and downs, but then once they got going, it was win after win after win, riding them all the way into a number two spot for a first round bye in the 2021 playoffs. So because of that, also coupling that with the fact that Laura Harvey stepped into coach in the middle of the season. And since she stepped in named coach of the year, she had a tremendous run with the team. Um, her being there and now being able to kind of craft her team with the expansion draft, potentially understanding what's going to happen there. Um, and then the college draft and looking at different players to come on loan or to be traded throughout the league. I believe that Laura Harvey can put together a really fantastic team. And even if she doesn't get the players with in incredible skill, um, even though she already has a lot on her roster that are very individually talented, she has the mindset to be able to move people around in different formations, think outside the box um, and, and put the best combination of players together on the field. So I hope that we don't regret putting all rain at number two, but I honestly don't think we will because uh, they've proven that they can really do anything on the field and, and surprise a lot of different people in the league and, and around the world with who they get. And who knows, maybe they'll get some more lone players next season. Um, it's very possible. Uh, but I, I like to keep all rain at number two right now. It's despite not knowing. And that's the best part about this episode is that we have no idea and we get to speculate and, and hope we're right. No, I'm I'm with you on that. I mean, even with those three big players, they still have a ton of talent on that roster. Somebody like a Bethany Balser, right? Somebody like a Sofia Huerta, uh, Quinn in the midfield for them. Jess Fishlock, who's been with the team for a very, very long time. And I'm and I'm also just sort of curious to see like how Laura Harvey gets involved in this offseason as well, because she has historically 
not been somebody who has really utilized the drafts in the past. Uh, it was almost a little bit of a um, NWSL, you know, culture type of joke where it's like, oh, is Laura Harvey actually going to make a trade to trade out of, of the draft, right? So I'm very curious to sort of see how, how uh, you know, she utilizes her sort of GM cap and this off season, uh, because there's been a couple, you know, a couple seasons already where uh, Laura Harvey's been absent from from the action, and now she's uh, making her return. So I'm excited to see what she's got in the mix uh, for this team. Uh, for number three, maybe we're actually getting into a little bit of rivalry waters here. We've got Portland Thorns FC in our way too early power rankings. Uh, we understand again. We're talking a little bit a lot about about this already, but. Looking at this Portland Thorns team as it stands heading into 2022, similar to all rain, there's uh, some unknowns. You know, the there are rumors of the MVP candidate in Angela Salem potentially stepping away from the game. Uh, Crystal Dunn uh, said at the end of the season, as the Portland Thorns were heading on to their uh, playoff run, that she is expecting her first child with her husband, so she will be out due to pregnancy. And there have been those longstanding rumors of a player like Lindsay Huran uh, to possibly seek opportunities overseas uh, in, in France. And not only that, there was a huge change in the head coaching position, which a lot of people knew was coming already because the club had gotten in front of it. And uh, the departure of Mark Parsons came after six years with the Thorns at the conclusion of their 2021 run in the uh, uh, semifinals there. And they have made some, some moves right in this off season already, but it hasn't necessarily been, on the player side of things. Mm -hmm. So we had an interview with Karina LeBlanc on the show, who is now their new general manager. Um, they have made the official uh, announcement of their new head coach and Ryan Wilkinson, uh, who the both of them together will have to tackle this off season. Both, both of them, Canadian, former Canadian internationals and former Thorns players. So we're going to get a chance to see how they're going to fill those spots of their own potentially moving forward into uh, into 2022. Uh, but Mark Parsons has sort of left what's a little bit of a blueprint, I think, maybe for this team. This is another team maybe similar to, uh, to uh, Washington Spirit that we can look at uh, that has a young core in place. And a, a big thing that was talked about with the Portland Thorns during their 2021 run was that they had so much depth on the roster. So we're looking at players like uh, Tyler Lucy, who got picked up in the 2017 draft, Bella Bixie in the 2018 draft, Morgan Weaver and Sophia Smith, both in the 2020 draft. And then there's somebody like Olivia Moultrie, who's literally come up through their, uh, you know, Academy youth programs. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about keeping the thorns at number three. They've always sort of had this culture with, they constantly want to, compete. So I wouldn't be surprised if they are definitely in the mix in the regular table. And I wouldn't, and I don't think we're going to have regrets having them sort of in the top three in this power ranking. Remember Portland Thorns won three of the four awards that they could have won in the 2021 season. They won the challenge cup. They won the shield. They won the WICC. Uh, they, they know how to win and they have that winning culture and the winning history. I think that Despite player movement and things that are happening, I think losing Mark Par Mark Parsons, head coach, is probably one of the biggest factors um, that maybe puts Portland at number three on this list and not number one or number two, because he has those players that he drafted in Tyler Lucy, Bella Bigsby, um, Morgan Weaver, Sophia Smith, that he, he, he drafted to have this culture. Mark Parsons always talks about the identity of his team and the cultures and the players buying into that type of culture. And, and he acquires those players at the youth program and through the academy. Um, and he really molds them to be the type of thorns that he wants to coach and the type of identity that he wants his team to have. And now having Rain Wilkinson at the helm as the head coach, we could see that identity shifting um, because she could have a different foundation that she wants to build this club on and, and her tenure there as a head coach. And, and that could look very different. Even having Cabrina LeBlanc, Karina LeBlanc as the GM, there could be shifts in personnel that we see, stylistic tactics that we see. But as you mentioned, Sandra, the depth at Portland is there and they do have a lot of very talented players that can do a number of different things. So even if Wilkinson does want to change up tactics and formation, she still has such a core group of talented players to work with that 
gives her the flexibility, honestly, to change anything up that she wants. Um, so I think we have to keep Portland in, in the top of our five teams because they are notorious for winning and doing well. And, and players are just bought in. There's something about going and playing at Portland Thorns um, that players want to do knowing that the home atmosphere they have, and, and we can't forget the 12th man in Providence Park, right? Like those fans, they they give the Thorns a lift whenever they're on the field. So I'm very uh, happy and pleased to keep Portland right at number three, despite all of the changes happening in the league right now. I'm with you. Let's get to our, our final two here at number four. We're putting New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC at number four of our way too early power rankings. Uh, we were just very impressed uh, with the run that they had in 2021. This is a team that did it with two different head coaches, right? In 2021, starting off the year with former head coach Freya Kuhn, who they lost uh, later into the midseason uh, due to uh, opportunity with Angel City. And then they brought on Scott, uh, Scott Parkinson from uh, formerly of, uh, an assistant at Chicago Red Stars. And they went on this amazing run. They started off as, as finalists, right, in the 2021 uh, Challenge Cup and then went on to compete in the regular season, always really kind of staying within that top six mix, never really out of the conversation. Uh, and even though it took until that final week of the regular season to ultimately clinch their place, in the NWSL playoffs, they went ahead and they did that. And a big part of how they did what did that was seeing that return and somebody like Margaret Purse who came back from injury uh, was a huge bump for them and a boost down the stretch in that playoff push. And this was a player that they made a trade for already a couple of seasons ago. But you can already see some of the uh, payoff there. And if it's not even just on the pitch, it's off the pitch as well. The culture, the identity that is being built up around Gotham FC in connection with a player like Margaret Purse and also in somebody like Amani Dorsey and somebody like Enifio Anamani. So I think even with the some, some of the limited things that we've been seeing in this offseason, Lisa, like they've been announcing just um, the typical things, like players that they are not – uh, going to be extending uh, the options on their contracts. Players whose who, who's loans have completed and now they're moving on, right? There hasn't been like a, a big move here or there yet, right? The key word is yet. Uh, but even with, with all of that in mind, I feel good with having Gotham here at number four. I think they only have room to grow. They went, they got eliminated in quarterfinals and I think it's, it's up and outwards from here versus taking a step back. How about you? Yeah, number four is definitely the highest I think I would ever put Gotham in, in the rankings for the 2022 season because um, there is a lot of room to grow, but they had a lot of the pieces towards the end of this season. They did make it into the playoffs, but couldn't really find the final piece for them to to make it all the way and to have that final push. They had a lot of even keeledness in, in their game and in their club. That's kind of what I'm going to say. That's how I'm going to word this. It's, it was very even. You knew what you were going to get. You knew what you expected from Gotham. There weren't really any surprises that came from it. You had good players in Margaret Purse that continuously did well. And defensively, they were a lockdown, uh, but they had their slip up moments and back and forth times for Gotham. But really, it was the same day in and day out. Whereas when you look at other teams, even Washington Spirit, yes, of course, they won. So that gives them a little bit of an edge. But they had a lot of young players and you didn't really know what you were going to get. And they had a lot of spunk and a lot of attitude. So for Gotham, I think having Scott Parkinson uh, did change things a little bit for this team um, based on what they could do. It was also a big year in 2021 for Carly Lloyd saying goodbye. And now the emotional aspect of that is out the window. And now it's time to focus for Gotham. What can they do on the pitch to make themselves stand out? Because their standout in 2021 was the rebrand. They had kits and colors and a new name in Gotham FC. Now 2022, this is the year where this team can take their identity on the field and match it to their rebrand? Can they be just as exciting and just as fresh and new to the league, um, especially going up against some big competition uh, across the coast? I think that also plays a little bit of a factor into this because Gotham now not only will have to travel to Portland and, and Washington and OL Reign, but two other teams on the West Coast and those big cross-country travels 
time changes, it all plays a factor. But um, lots of talented players and lots of talented pieces at Gotham FC that they'll make a run for the, a playoff push by the end of the 22 season. I hear that. And you know what? I like that. That is a good segue to our number five pick because we you, we kind of viewed this number five, this fifth, this top five pick as like a dark horse pick for us. And we wanted to be a little bit ambitious with this one. But even within that ambition, after the Washington Spirit went and did what they did is I chose them as my dark horse. I'm like, you know what? I feel good about this one, too. And we're going to get into why. We're going with Kansas City Current as our number five in the power rankings for our dark horse pick. They're already making moves in the offseason. And really, these this kind of stemmed a little bit from their second half of the season. This was a franchise that recognized immediately the place that they were in. They were in the bottom half of the table for the majority of the first half of the second se of the season. And they knew during the second season it was going to be a long grind. And they started looking ahead a little bit. They made moves. In the midseason, they brought players in like Kristen Hamilton, Haley Mace. They made a huge move for their goalkeeper in Adriana French. And now in the offseason, they're continuing those things. In their final game, they also had the rebrand. They introduced the logo, the crest, emphasizing the colors and the new name. But they moved things around in the administrative side of things. Hugh Williams is no longer the head coach of this team. Kansas City is currently in the process of a search for a new head coach. Uh, tough first year, moving him into more of a front office administrative role. And obviously we have to talk about it, Lisa. The biggest push, I think, for us putting this team in number five was the fact that they went out and made a trade for Sam Mewis in the midfield because that now gives them three huge players in three key areas of the pitch. And it just sort of felt in that second half run of Kansas City when they were playing that spoiler, it was like, gosh, it's like, what would it look like if they maybe had like a, like one more piece or another piece there? And I think we're about to see it. I love this pick, Lisa. I'm glad we left that at number five. Me too. The hype for Kansas City really started at the second half, the end of the 2021 season. That's when all the buzz was starting to, to happen. And, and Sandra, you and I, we talked about it. I was like, I cannot wait to see this Kansas City team next season. Once they've had a little bit of time to establish themselves, once they've gathered the right pieces and the right players, um, because you could already see what the potential was from Kansas City current at the end of the season being so disruptive to the playoff runs of every single team that they faced towards the end of it. And it wasn't just the home field advantage that they had. It was this little chip on their shoulder that Kansas City is last in the league and they can do anything. I think because of that, the players were so bought into the mindset of this underdog wrecking ball team that they could be. Um, that that's just going to roll over into next season because not a lot of people are going to have their eyes on Kansas city because of what they didn't do in the 2021 season. And as you mentioned already, this team is changing things for the better. Um, it, Hugh Williams, a, a great guy from every time I spoke with him, I don't know elsewise, but probably not the best choice for the head coach, more of a GM role, front office role for him, which I think is a good move for this club. They need someone that can be really keyed in on the players on this team and be so invested into building a club that can succeed. Um, and, and that starts with a new head coach. We've already seen, uh, as you mentioned, the trades happening, Get, getting Sam Mewis in the midfield for Kansas City is so huge. She is a playmaker on the ball, off the ball, her movement. I think her combined with Kristen Hamilton, even a Haley Mace that they acquired throughout the season uh, in the midfield, Sam Lewis alongside Lo Labonta, fire. That is fire right there. And, and the magic that can happen. Um, and it's just the mindset of this team is that underdog mentality that makes you think that they're going to surprise you by the end of the season and just be at the top. So I'm also saying I don't think that this Kansas City team is going to come out and start the 2022 season going on a 10 and 0 streak, winning streak, just crushing all of their opponents. I don't foresee that happening. However, I could foresee a lot of clean sheets happening, especially if they keep Adriana French in goal. That is a huge get for them because 
your team really needs to be built around defense and putting a brick wall in in front of the goal. That's the best way to do it. Now, can they turn that into consistent attacking offense? Honestly, yes. With players in the midfield, like Sam Lewis that they just acquired can create a lot of different things. So hands down, Kansas City dark horse for 2022. I see it. I see the Kansas City current making their way towards the top of the table.